McLaren are about to take over the lead in the Constructors' Championship, but things are going downhill for the team in Papaya Orange. Race after race it's becoming more clear that McLaren are afraid to take difficult decisions and choose their number one driver, but this is going to cost them in the long run, as the drivers are showing the first signs of a broken relation. Will they be able to handle this problem within the team? The cracks started to show when Lando and Oscar were asked if McLaren should back Lando Norris in the championship fight against Verstappen. Here it became clear that no one knows what's really going on within the team. Norris, it's not up to me. I think as any driver you don't want things to play that way. I wouldn't say we're running out of time but time is going away slowly. It's not for me to decide. Piastri, no comments. This just shows that things aren't going right at the moment and last weekend just added more fuel to the fire. As once again, Lando Norris failed to convert pole position into victory at Monza. The British driver surrendered the race lead to teammate Oscar Piastri on lap one, setting the stage for another close call in Italy. With critical points after escaping Norris, he feels McLaren came very near to catastrophe, with Piastri being the main instigator this time. Before Sunday's Grand Prix, the narrative around McLaren was overwhelmingly favourable. The Papaya team was riding high following a strong Zandvoort victory and a clear one, two in qualifying. However, Andrea Stella's team is being chastised for common flaws. McLaren made another strategic error by deploying both drivers on the two-stop plan. Their choice to pit Piastri was particularly perplexing, considering that covering Leclerc was the sole required step towards victory. The Woking team has also been chastised for failing to develop a clear number one driver, and this could turn out to be costly at the end of the season. Whether these claims are true or not, McLaren will continue to face similar issues as victories slip away. Lando Norris spoke to Sky Sports after the race and shared his thoughts on what happened on lap one. Obviously, I would have just braked a bit later if I needed to. We had a big gap behind and between us two cars, there's no risk. I feel like he got way too close for comfort. We both easily could have been out in that corner if I braked one meter later. Obviously, if I could rewind, I would do stuff slightly differently, but it is what it is. Oscar drove a good race, and so did Charles. When questioned about the team's overall attitude, Norris was more optimistic. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. We always review things. We're doing a very good job. Of course, today was not our day, and we didn't get things correct, but I wouldn't say we got them wrong today either. McLaren's operational blunders, ranging from bad strategy to clumsy pit stops, have cost the team from the start of the season. Having said that, the frequency of their unforced errors is becoming more worrying. Given their clear performance advantage, McLaren should comfortably lead both rankings. Even on a circuit that isn't well suited to the MCL 38, it was the fastest machine in both qualifying and race trim. Claiming a 1-2 at Monza, which was obviously possible, would have made a significant statement. Of course, with eight rounds remaining in the year, there will be further possibilities. Red Bull's problems have not subsided, allowing Andrea Stella's squad to tighten the gap in both championships. Still, McLaren should not believe that their performance advantage is unchallengeable. Ferrari and Mercedes are within touching distance, and it only takes one disastrous race for Red Bull to recoup points. While the MCL 38 dominates the timing sheets, Norris and Piastri must achieve comparable performances. And one thing that struck this weekend that added to the disaster was the constant reminder from the pit wall to the drivers to think about the papaya rules. We all know Formula One loves a new phrase to talk about, and it got one at the Italian Grand Prix when papaya rules entered the lexicon through McLaren. Its debut use occurred when Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri locked out the front row at Monza, prompting a sharp admonition from team principal Andrea Stella to keep the race clean among the team's drivers. Essentially, Papaya Rules appears to be McLaren's new shorthand for keep your racing clean, but expressed in a way that adheres to the company's business requirements, given that Papaya is the Woking-based outfit's official color. Even before the race, when Norris's race engineer, Will Joseph, 
assured him that he was free to race Piastri after falling behind but under Papaya regulations, Stella had provided his own explanation of what the phrase meant after qualifying at Monza. Our recommendation is always racing with the Papaya rules, whereby when the car is Papaya, like you are always careful with any other competitor, but if the car is Papaya, you take even extra care, he said. We need to make sure, especially being the car so competitive, that we see the chequered flag and that we try and drive the race in synergy between our two drivers, rather than thinking that my main competitor is my teammate. We try to stay away from this kind of mindset because it's not productive. Norris was asked for his own explanation of what the term means, and he put it rather more succinctly after Piastri overtook him on the first lap of the race, saying the term means, just don't crash, that's all. There was no contact, so Piastri did a good job. These rules of engagement between teammates, especially those at the front of the field, are far from a new concept in Formula 1, but it is the first time that there has been a public acknowledgement of these rules existing while under a catch-all term that also matches the relevant team's branding. And following Piastri's daring attempt on his teammate at Monza, the McLaren team chief emphasized that these regulations are not etched in stone and may be altered based on their situation, particularly considering their strengthening position in the F1 2024 title race. Thus, Andrea Stella says McLaren will investigate their papaya rules and driver's behavior after Lando Norris claimed he and Oscar Piastri nearly crashed when the Australian challenged him on the first lap of the Italian Grand Prix. Stella told his drivers to obey the papaya rules and not think of their teammate as a rival as that is not productive when they lined up first and second on the Monza grid with Norris on pole. McLaren would examine whether drivers were completely compliant or not. The teammates made a clean start off the line and into the turn one half chicane, with Norris leading ahead of Piastri until the Aussie challenged him at the second chicane. He not only moved past to seize the lead, but also allowed Charles Leclerc to pass Norris for second place. The Brit believes if he had braked one meter later, we would have probably crashed. So something we'll look at. Stella was questioned in his post-race media briefing if Piastri had followed the papaya regulations. We will have to review together with the drivers, look at the videos, understand their point of view, and then we will assess together whether they were fully compliant or not, he said. We will take the learning, if there is any learning that we need to take, and then we will adjust the papaya rules such that they allow us to pursue in the best possible manner both the Constructors' Championship and the Drivers' Championship, because we have to be now in condition to acknowledge that not only the Constructors' Championship is possible. Even from a driver's point of view, with the performance we have at the moment in the car and some of the struggles that we see with Red Bull, it is definitely possible. So if we can achieve both as a team, we need to put the team in condition and Lando in condition to pursue both championships. Piastri got 18 points to Norris's 15 on Sunday, and in the end, it was Leclerc who utilized a one-stop strategy who won ahead of his McLaren teammates. With championship leader Max Verstappen securing only eight points on a difficult weekend for McLaren, Norris reduced his lead in the standings to 62 points. It could have been 59 if McLaren had switched the drivers around. We did not consider that, Stella said. We considered other ways during the race to make sure that Lando had his own opportunities, but we didn't consider the swap because we were still willing to put as much pressure as possible on Leclerc. He does, however, admit that it is something McLaren may do in future races because Norris is in the best position to fight Verstappen for the World Championship. Both drivers are mathematically in the title fight, but Lando is obviously in the best position from a numbers point of view he said. We are fighting Max Verstappen, so I think if we want to give support to one driver, we definitely have to pick the one that is in the best position. And also, I think Lando, as you know, he's been doing very well, like pole position in Zandvoort, pole position here. If anything with Lando, we need to adjust some little racing things which may help him, may help us capitalize on pole position like we had here in Monza. I think if we look at this first lap, while we review it together, 
we might see that there were a couple of things that we could have done more, slightly better. McLaren's double podium cut the Constructors' Championship lead to eight points over Red Bull, with eight races left. But will they also be able to clinch the Drivers' Championship title after all these little mistakes? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.